Hola, estoy aquí para mis fans, eh, por supuesto. We have Oscar the Grouch, Pippi Longstocking, from here today, from popular culture as well. Leave me alone, I need some peace and quiet in here. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. We also have the reincarnate of David Hume, Simone de Beauvoir, and are lucky enough to be joined by Paolo Freire, although the time machine has malfunctioned and he's stuck in the age of a toddler. All of these guests are philosophers, of course. The truth springs from arguments amongst friends. What is a woman? Good question, Simone. But today we are discussing the topic of home. Yes, and don't forget Larvesta is here with us. They're a Pokemon. They, they're a fire and bug type. And they're usually found at a level of 26. Oh, of course, we also have with us your friend uh, Leonardo, right? Oh yeah, we do. I skipped eighth period to be here, so it better be worth it. Hold up. I gotta check my TikTok. Pretty sure this one isn't gonna go viral either, but I gotta see who looked at it. Wait, you skipped part of school? You're not gonna be on the limo list. Anyway, what was our first question today, Frankie? To our topic of discussion today is home. What do you think makes something a home? Well, I think a home is a place that you're, we, you will live for all... It couldn't be like, oh, I'm in this house for one second, now I'm out. That would not be a home. That would just be like a place you're visiting. A home would be like a place, like, um, a place that you stay, for, stay in for at least like five months. I agree, yes. And a home is a place that you feel comfortable, where you feel safe. Maybe you even have pets there. Like us, we have two cats. We have two one, cats. And one of them is currently jumping on the table. Some people have beetles. Oh yeah. Ugh, oh, you really want to know what I think? Fine. My garbage can, it's my place, my sanctuary. What are the benefits of living in a trash can, exactly? You think it's just a pile of trash, but it's cozy, familiar, and brimming with my most cherished possessions. Rubbish! What makes a place home, you ask? It's where you feel snug and secure engulfed by the things and the insufferable people, or in my exceptional case, the delightful garbage that you adore. Now, leave me alone to wallow in peace. Yes, Oscar, I can see why you are comfortable in your home. If you, your favorite thing is trash and you live in a garbage can, that makes perfect sense. I think that a lot of times you're very misunderstood. People 
don't understand why you live the way you do, but it makes perfect sense to me. What do you think, Forrest? Well, <clears throat> I think I would rather live in a house than a garbage can. But if I lived in a garbage can, I'd probably want to live in a garbage can that got a lot of garbage that was a good garbage, for example, cardboard. I know you really like cardboard. I mean, like, probably. So, that's what I think. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Oh, I gotta go get something. La resta, lar, lar. La resta, lar, lar. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> la resta. La resta. Oh my god. <gasps> like, oh my god. I am so totally over my parents trying to, like, control everything I do. And don't even get me started on power structures, like, in general. They're, like, so lame. Ugh. Just let me do me, you know? For reals. I've been thinking a lot about, like, where I'll move once I have enough cash saved up, you know? Maybe I'll just, like, wander around for a bit and, like, crash in my friends' places until I find somewhere that's, like, a total vibe, you know? I mean, it's not about just, like, getting away from my parents' house and all that drama. It's also about finding, like, a space that's 100% me. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Leonardo. Everything. That could be a really good place to start looking for a new home. You know what's funny? My papa, he lives on a big old ship, but me, I live in a house. We're family, but our homes are like all different. Sometimes I really don't want to do those pesky chores, but then I tell myself, Pippi, you gotta clean up your house, you know? So I put on my super duper scrubbing shoes and I scrub a dub dub. I reckon it's real important to look after your home, no matter what kind it is or who's living there with you. Pippi, I agree. Keeping uh, uh, your house clean is very important. I feel like your home is a reflection of your inner thoughts and your mind and your state of mind. So if you have a clean home, then your thoughts are organized and you can get your work done and um, be at peace there, really. <laughs> I wish to emphasize that it is crucial for a woman to post the liberty to reside sans homme, to rule her own domain without constraint. She must not be subjected to mal power nor rely on them for validation. It is her inherent right to procure her own abode, one which mirror her unique essence and fortitude. Such sovereignty, mes amis, can be transformative, fostering personal evolution and the unveiling of one's true self. What are you saying? Oh, I understand, Simone. Thank you for your thoughts. That is an ideal situation for a woman to be able to procure, proc procure her own home in the manner in which she wishes without, you know, male domination or power structures. But uh, unfortunately, that's not possible for all. Me see big powers make people no food, no toys. Not fair, mommies, daddies make kids work tiny coins, always tell do this, do that. All should pick on stuff, have happy safe home. We see things not same, make world nice, fair all people. Can I just say first that uh, that does make sense. It's hard being a child with people telling you what you can and cannot do. Um, I understand that, and I hope that your parents are reasonable. Well, technically, you, there is only one option for a home. <clears throat> it's the Earth, because the Earth, we all live on the Earth. And it wouldn't be like we want to go to Jupiter, because then we wouldn't be able to breathe. The Earth is our home. You know, 
Some idiots might assume I'm unhoused just because I live in this here garbage can, but let me tell you, it's the absolute perfect home for a grouch like me. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I got the sweet, sweet, sweet freedom to up and move whenever I feel like it and not a single worry about coughing up money for housing expenses. And the best part? I'm surrounded by my one true love. Glorious, magnificent trash. My garbage can fortress provides me with everything I could ever want and then some. So, who needs a fancy house when you've got a top of the line, state of the art garbage can like mine? That's so true, Oscar. You're a nomad. You can up and move whenever you like. I can see the benefits of that. Um, it's very cool that we're all just little small parts of life here on our home, on Earth, here in the universe. You know, life on the road as a musician, it's like it totally transforms how you see home, right? Hotels in my wild, fabulous tour bus, they're my home away from home. My tour bus, let me tell you, it's like this unbelievably cozy little haven on wheels. It's got this super comfy place to crash, a tight little kitchen. And even this rad nook for writing all my sick beats. It's mind blowing how we can bend and twist ourselves just to find that place that tingles our soul like home, no matter where we're partying on this crazy planet. We're just looking for a place that we can feel safe. Cause like, if you don't feel safe anywhere, then it just, it's just like, it won't be safe. Probably. So you sh really should be in a place that you feel is safe. Okay. Okay. One of my favorite hotels I've stayed at was this charming boutique hotel in Paris. It had this incredible view of the city from the balcony and the room was full of beautiful artwork. I felt so inspired and at peace there, even though it was just a temporary home. It's amazing how certain places just resonate with us and make us feel so at ease. Guess what? Me see peep on street other day with all their thingy things. Me think maybe them no have home. It make me feel like boo-boo inside. All peep should have safe and snug place for home time. We all need love and mommies and to help other peeps with not so much. Yes, we do need to help others that don't have as much as we do. Um, and even if you don't have a lot, there's still things you can do to help others. People used to say the homeless, the homeless. And now people say temporarily unhoused, which is more accurate because being without a home doesn't define a person. Um, the people in that population, Paolo, don't worry, will be able to find resources and find a home. They may not be unhoused forever, but just temporarily so. There are a lot of people uh, temporarily unhoused people in San Diego. I mean, especially in downtown. I mean, it makes me feel sad. I wish I could just give our house away to them, but we only have one house, and I'd rather have us have a house. I mean, we, like, gave away some stuff like deodorant and foot cream and stuff like that, and we sometimes gave away that stuff. Yes, we've had... Uh fundraising drives and drives for supplies to help the unhoused population. It's true. Are you weirdos still out there talking about this? You're giving me a headache. I'm so sorry, Para mí. Oscar. Para mí. El lugar también se trata de estar en los brazos, abrazado por una mujer hermosa. Esa sensación de amor y conexión puede hacer que cualquier lugar se sienta como un, como un hogar. It makes sense that you would want to be in the hands of a beautiful woman because everyone's, because once everyone was just in the belly of a woman. That's true. A woman is everyone's first home. Unless you're born in an egg. <laughs> Like La Vesta. Oh. Wait, wait. I didn't go get something. Okay, fine. La Vesta! La la la! Vesta! La Vesta la! Oh my. Oh, they're just saying, could you feed me because I'm hungry?
hungry. Mm. <laughs> it's almost dinner time, Larvesta. Because it is. Oh. Get ready for your blood worms. What is real? What if your home was only there when you were looking at it, and when you turn around, it's not even there? What if your home is only there when you're looking at it? How do you know it exists when you're not looking at it? What is real? Well, Frankie, don't start talking about existence, because existence is our next topic, okay? Eh, bueno, como digo, pero no hay boda. Eh, realmente prefiero tener muchas amantes y disfrutar de la libertad que me brinda ese estilo de vida. Para mí, mi hogar es un estado mental y puedo encontrarlo en diferentes lugares y con diferentes personas. La idea de un hogar permanente es menos atractiva para mí. Disfruto la flexibilidad y la variedad de mis relaciones y en mi vida. Oh, Bad Bunny, I am in total accord avec toi. It is vital that we do not forget the significance of this liberty, not only for women, but for all gender, n'est-ce pas? Each individual should be able to embrace the splendor of multiple lovers, selecting their own partner sans the heavy burden of judge. Love, my dear friend, must never be constrained by conventional category or the stifling expectation of society. It is only by celebrating the freedom to love, to choose, and to express ourselves authentically que nous pouvons create a more understanding, tolerant, and accepting society pour tout le monde. Me love sit mommy lap, but mommy say, no, mommy working now, me feel no fair. Me just want mommy tension and love, but me know mommy have other things do. Me learn about people's different jobs and what matter most, and me learning to expect that. Oh, Paolo, yes, it is so hard when you can't sit in your mommy's lap, I understand. Oh. Even I'm, I like to. Yeah. I'm glad you're learning to respect her boundaries and her need to work at times. Well, when I'm 30, I want to have a house that has three floors. One include, not including a basement, so four floors. The basement is going to be like a gaming, exercise, and playroom. Ooh. And each floor will have a bathroom, one bathroom, one bedroom. Except the basement will have one bathroom, but no, but except none of the other things that I'm saying. One be bedroom, one living room, one kitchen, mm. lots of kitchens, one dining room, and one elevator. Ooh, what about a backyard? Oh, and I have a backyard. That's, that's like 15, no, wait, like. 100 square feet Ooh. in the front yard that's like 93 square feet. Nice. What's going to be in the backyard? The backyard is going to be like a basketball hoop that you can play basketball on. And in the front, it's, it's going to be like a sledding place that's kind of like a slope. Ooh, that is so exciting. I would love to go sledding with you in your backyard. And some, maybe I'll rent, I'll rent out one of some of the floors. Oh, that's, that's wise. You'll get some extra income, pay off that mortgage. And um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for your 30-year-old, when you're 30 and you're going to have this home. I hope I'll get to play basketball with you and visit you. You will. Yeah. There's... I have plenty of gold for ice cream and treats at my home, Villa Villa Kula on Estrada Street. Papa left it for me. Well, that's impossible because Pippi, Pippi Longstockings is not there here. Because Pippi Longstockings, you know you're just a character from a show. So technically, we could be neighbors. Because we would always be neighbors because I'd always have a TV. And, sh and, and Pippi's books. from a book. Oh, yeah, a book. And I'd always have the book of Pippi, so we'd technically always be in the same house, even. 
Wait, wait, wait a minute, Boris. What is real and what is not real is a topic for next time. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for Think Tanks every Saturday with Pumpernickel Pallas and other important thinkers. Next time on Think Tank con los Escarabajos, we will be discussing existence. Existence? Existence. Okay, bye. Bye. See you next time. See you next time. Done. Da da dun. Dun. Da da dun. Dun. Da da dun. Da -da -dun. Da -da -dun.